Tonight's chat's brought to you by Chat Track Record. Um, so this is an album by Joan Armour Trading. She's absolutely phenomenal. Um, some of the songs on here. Drop the Pilot. <laughs> Drop the Pilot. Fly my balloon. Drop the Mahout. Smell my perfume. Drop the monkey, I'm your easy rider Who needs an army to fight a winning battle Or is it a losing battle? Hmm, one of those Animal, mineral I'm the one you need, I'm the one you need Is someone the one that Barry needs? Yeah, what else we got? I love it when you call me names God, I'm lucky. Me, myself, I. And it's got a pretty amazing song called The Weakness in Me. I really love that song. Um, Down to Zero. And it's got Love and Affection. Pretty cool song. It's also got Willow. So yeah, Joan Armour Trading Track Record just chose that for tonight and I wanted to talk about narcissists, mothers and sons. So you know, I've been watching true crime on YouTube for a number of years now and in that space of time I don't I don't pick up every case. I'm not I don't watch a lot of them and some of them I pick up quite retrospectively like Kaylee and Casey Anthony and others I follow right from the start and as all of you probably know mothers and sons are a huge part of some of the crimes that we really get intensely and very emotionally attached to and very affected by and what do you notice about mothers and sons are we so often aren't we just calling them narcissists these sons whether they're covert overt vulnerable grandiose whatever terminology we we want to throw around or look up and a lot of these male killers we deem to be narcissists and we look at their mothers and we, or, or female killers because I, I'm talking about two, I'm going to talk about two people here. Um, so I'm going to mention Christopher Watts and I'm going to mention Laurie Cox and when we look at their mothers, the mothers of these narcissists, we think, wow, yeah, what a piece of work, you know, don't we? We don't think of Cindy Watts and think, wow, gosh, she is salt of the earth, that woman. What a, oh, gosh. Yeah. See how she grieves for her grandchildren, the tragedy for, for the daughter-in-law, you know, we, we look at Cindy Watts and we just think, wow, this is a veritable, this is a nightmare. This is, it gives you brain freeze to try and imagine how Christopher Watts grew up and how he felt about his mother. And, you know, one thing I have noticed when you look at cases with people that we deem to be narcissists and who have mothers like Cindy Watts, you know, or just narcissists and, you know, you hear a little bit about their childhood or you study it, you realize that there's neglect involved. There's always absence of something. There's not there's not a bond, there's not this close relationship, there's not this comfort, this safety, this feeling that you get that Cindy Watts would have been responsive to, you know, responsive to um, Chris Watts and um, 
his you know childhood experiences and needs and you certainly get that feeling with Laurie Cox don't you and Janice and what Laurie Cox probably went through growing up and her neglect and you know I find just me just human animal you know Neglect in childhood seems to um, be something of a common thread amongst these narcissists and us feeling disgusted by their mothers seems to be another common thread that we like to throw around apparently on here on the tubes that Barry Morphew is a narcissist. I've heard it spoken. I can't remember if I've said it. I can't remember if I've thought, is he like this? I, I, I'd have to go back um, and see because I remember other people's things more than I say myself sometimes. Um, or most of the times. Um, so when people talk of Mrs. Morphew, I think she might be Mrs. Morphew, married to a Mr. Morphew. Uh, well, Andy Mormon himself has said that she's a wonderful woman, very kind, close. What, you know, I can't remember the words, so I won't say it, but you know, you'll be able to look it up. I'll go back. I, I, I can remember the conversation. I could quote it nearly verbatim, but I won't um, because I'll get it a bit wrong. But, you know, you could extrapolate. Lovely woman feels that she's a lovely, wonderful woman. And indeed, I believe Tyson Draper also said, because I wasn't sure, did she get out of the car? Was it to here? Did she sit in the vehicle? But I think he said that she seemed very, very nice. I'm not sure if he exchanged words. And, you know, indeed, we haven't, you know, haven't uh, got anything to go on, I don't think, um, that could show otherwise that... Where is this narcissism and Barry coming from? I mean, is it just a born thing? Is it something created? You know, um, but, you know, I just thought that was interesting. What are the track records, perhaps, of these moms that we're seeing um, when we examine cases? Because there is a lot of information these days. We get transcripts, court records, we get video, audio, we get discoveries, we get we, we get so much information, we get interviews on Dr. Phil and um, interviews by the wonderful Nate Eaton and look, if you have not checked out Awen Reese, R-E-E-S and her channel, um, the award that she made up for Nate Eaton to just um, praise, acknowledge and thank him for all of the work that he did, did following um, Chad DeBell, Laurie Cox to find out what happened to Tylee Ryan and J.D. Vallo. Um, I mean, it's really fantastic. It's funny, it's clever, it's spot on, and it is such a lovely tribute to, to um, yeah, to Nate, Nate Eden of East Idaho News. Anyway, I thought I'd mention that just as it came up in my mind then because, um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's fabulous. But, you know, we, we learn a lot through these people, um, through the interviews that have been gained by all sorts of sources, okay? And whether it is a YouTuber, whether it's people going back and seeing videos that might have been uploaded of just family life or holidays or work things or whatever it is, right? So when Christopher Watts's mum and dad Cindy and Ronnie Watts um, spoke. They they actually did long interviews and a lot of things um, to various media outlets and have been very widely spoken as a whole, as a family. Uh, and... <laughs> 
Cindy Watts didn't come off very well because she just couldn't seem to just say, I'm so sorry for those little girls and for what my son has done and that's all anyone really would have liked to have heard anyway. And same with Janice Cox and is she still known as Cox? Um, you know, and Summer Shiflet, Laurie's sister. I mean, they just do not come off well and you really get a feeling of bad juju and what do we say about their progeny? We say narcissist. And it is thrown around that, that Barry Morphew was a narcissist and a horrible person and quite nasty and controlling, la la la. And I just thought I'd mention that, well, mm, is this just something of a pa out of pattern? or So maybe that is something that um, Zoe at um, live abuse free could talk about or you know because she has now made a, an excellent video about Laurie Cox and that Zoe at live Ab abuse free um yeah so I don't know I'd like someone who knows something about it to talk about maybe parent relationships because when I've heard Dr. Todd Grande talk about it, for example, when he, he sometimes reads out case studies and it is so striking to me, the loneliness or the, just the, the, um, isolation, the separation of the parent, possibly just one or both parents to the child that grows up to um, have narcissistic personality disorder or to have narcissistic traits whether they um, it, yeah anywho this is too long I'll speak to you later but I just thought it was interesting I wanted to hear what you think